tonight's episode of the Pie Box is sponsored in part by Butthurt Cream. Instant relief for your belief. Butthurt Cream. It's a work in progress. fans and welcome to another episode of the penalty box with your host Kalal Oakman. A lot has changed. I know we got a new studio. We're still working on it. It's, it's a work in progress for those diehard fans of mine that have been following me for the entire length of this show dating back to 2010. Uh, some of you are new to the program. Welcome to the program. I have to get some of those old fans up to speed. We are no longer cover. We are no longer covering the LGHL. We'll still monitor it from afar, but uh, we are not covering any video game hockey whatsoever. It's just that's the way the cookie crumbles. We did do a program back with LeagueArena.com, and then we moved over in the Great Exodus to LeagueGaming.com. We had a great time. Our tenure with the online gaming community was a lot of fun. It was uh, eventful. It was eye-opening and it really allowed us to hone our skills here on this show but we no longer cover that in fact we got promoted to the big time well not the NHL but the next best thing for those who never made the NHL the Adult Hockey Association that's right we got picked up by the AHA now for those of you still playing video games online at LeagueGaming.com and your fans and still watch the show, what the AHA is, you can go to AHAHockey.com and check it out. It is otherwise known as Beer League Hockey. It is actual, physical, real life club hockey. Yes, for those of you who love the game, you might want to check it out. For those of you in the AHA, whether you're on JMSHockey.com uh, or AHA.com or follow us on YouTube, welcome to the program. My name is Kalal Oakman. I am the host of The Penalty Box, the number one show on LeagueGaming.com, the number one show on LeagueArena.com while it was still in existence. Um, we'll be covering what's left of winter season, the premier season in the AHA. For those of you who, knew, who are new to the AHA, Winter season is the premier season. It is like the premier league in European football in Britain. There is also what they call regulation, uh, where teams get bumped down if they're not good enough. Some have had that happen. And then there's also promotion. Those that are too damn good get promoted to the next level up. We're going to be covering D1 East and D1 West. Basically two different conferences in the D1 division. Let's break it down with the D1 East, shall we? You have the Nordeasters, the Troopers, the Lakers, the Fighting Walleye, the Knights, the Wolfpack, the Yetis, and the Darkness. They're just called Darkness. A lot has been happening this season. Now, the Nordeasters were promoted to D1 last season. Since the Nordeasters were promoted, I'll just give you a little reason why they got promoted. Because their top scorer with 42 points on the season is a guy named Sh uh, Shell. If I butcher your name, please... Do not be offended. It happens all the time. I'm going to just flat out there tell you, I'm going to butcher people's names. It's just, it's going to happen. I don't know you personally. Please do not take any personal offense to this. In fact, some consider it as a rite of passage, a, a, a badge of honor, if you will. I do it all the time. I butcher my wife's name, for God's sakes. Yeah, I know. I'm English? I, I can speak it. I can't teach it. Shell, 27 goals, 15 assists, and 42 points. He's the second coming of Ray Bork. This guy, if you can take Ray Bork's child and Paul Coffey's child, a melded into one overgrown adult, 
you'd have Shell. He looks the part. The guy has a booming slap shot, and he's leading the Nords with 27 goals, 15 assists, and 42 points on the season. His line mate, Weiner, that's not a derogatory term, W-I-N-E-R, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to go with Winner or Weiner. Uh, well, Winner. We'll call him Winner. I hope. Winner has 14 goals, 17 assists, and 31 points. Then there's a little bit of a drop-off to the next guy in their scoring. He's a bit of a hothead, too, because he leads the team in penalty minutes, but we'll get to that in a second. His name is Johnson. Eight goals, five assists, 13 points. You go 42 points, 31 points, 13 points. Bit of a drop-off there. He also leads the team in penalty minutes with 34. He's a bit of a goon or a hothead or whatever. Their goalie, Hemel, has a 2.94 goals against average with a save percentage of 894. Not bad. Not bad at all. Second place team in the division is the Troopers. Troopers are led by Snyder with 21 goals, 10 assists, and 31 points. He also has 10 penalty minutes. Freeman, 16 goals, 10 assists, 26 points. And there's a small drop-off, not as drastic as on the Nords. But the next guy only has 19 points with 7 goals, 12 assists, and that's Halgerson. Then there's Swanson with 10 goals and 7 assists. He has 17 points. Their goalie, uh, Curtis, I believe that's his name, 3.14 goals against average with an 838 save percentage. Not bad. Rounding out the top three, you have the Lakers. The Lakers with syrup. That's how it's spelled. 14 goals, 17 assists, 31 points. Walk and fuss. W-O-K-E-N, oh, I'm sorry, W-O-C-K-E-N-F-U-S-S. If I butcher your name again, I apologize. I mean no disrespect. 13 goals, 15 assists, 28 points. Next guy has 21 points. It's Sp uh, Spilde, S-P-I-L-D-E. Uh, people's family names. 14 goals, 7 assists, 21 points. Is that our new security system? Really? Cool. Go take care. Would you please go take care of that? I ay, ay, Can't get good help these days. What do I pay you for? What? <sighs> Sorry. Anyways, spelled uh, 14 goals, 7 assists, 21 points. And then there's Giozzi. Uh, I guess he's Italian. I don't know. 4.06 goals against with an 863 percentage. That's the top three in the D1 East. The D1, the rounding out the D1 East, you have in fifth place currently, I'm sorry, in fourth place currently, the Fighting Walleye with a record of 8, 7, and 1, 17 points. I'll throw the graphic up here so you can see it. And then there's the Knights, the Wolfpack, and then the two teams that have already been eliminated from playoff contention, the Yetis and the Darkness. More on that after this quick break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Promotional consideration brought to you in part by FedEx. FedEx Ground. You have an important package that needs to be there by a deadline? Ship at FedEx Ground. Welcome back. Did you, did you figure out? What, what do you mean you didn't? I'm trying to do a show. Go figure. What do I pay you for? Go figure it out. Go do, do something, will you? Oh, can't get good help these days. <sighs> In the D1 East, two teams are already eliminated from playoff contention. That's the Yetis and the Darkness. The Yetis with 8 points and the Darkness with 5 points. The Wolfpack are sitting on the edge. They're teetering there. They're still mathematically in it, but they have to 
do something with the four remaining games. They have 13 points. A team above them is the Knights with 16 points. And then fourth in the final playoff spot, the Fighting Walleye have 17 points. It's a little bit of a log jam right there for that final playoff position. The Northeasters have already clinched a playoff position, and they look to be walking away with the division title. The Troopers, with 22 points, have themselves a tie with the Lakers. Both the Troopers and the Lakers need to get two more, excuse me, need to get three more points in the next four remaining games. If they do that, they will clinch playoff spots. The Fighting Walleye, the Knights, and the Wolfpack all have four games remaining. The Wolfpack play the Knights one more time. They do not play the Fighting Walleye. The Fighting Walleye control their destiny. The Wolfpack do not. They need help. The Knights also control their destiny, but uh, it doesn't look great for the Knights or the Wolfpack. But let's be brutally honest. They're pretty much swimming upstream. But that's just the way the cookie crumbles. After this quick break, we'll talk more about the D1 West. I'll give you a little summary of what's going on in that division. And we'll also talk about a local hothead, McConnell. He's kind of like the D1 version of Vermette. Assaulting an official? More on that coming up after this. Don't go away. Promotional consideration for the penalty box is brought to you in part by Total Hockey. TotalHockey.com Your number one source for all your hockey needs. Welcome back. The Hooligans, first place with 24 points. Second place is the Wolf Riots. It's the thing in space. I have to figure it out. They're 22 points. Ice Sages with 19 points. Flying Hellfish with 18 points. And then you have the Northern Horde with 11 points. Only two teams in this conference have been eliminated from playoff contention. And that is the Fighting Loons with 6 points. And Anchors D1 with 3 points. On the Fighting Loons... He also plays for the Wolfpack. But on the Fighting Loons, you have a guy by the name of McConnell. McConnell's a bit of a hothead. Kind of. This is a big guy. He's a center. He likes to play big, likes to screen the goalies. He likes to get down the dirty areas, kind of like Parisi. He likes the greasy, dirty goals. But that comes with a price. Sometimes he spends a little bit of the time in the penalty box, in the sin bin, if you will. He has 26 penalty minutes on the season right now, currently, with uh, the um, Fighting Loons. He got a 10-minute unsportsmanlike for berating a ref. Yes, verbally abusing a ref. Story has it, he was jawjacking with another player, got in trouble, got a penalty, was skating towards the penalty box. He was complaining to the ref about some non-calls or something, and under, a bre under his breath he said something. Well, the person heard him and made a snark comment, like a, a snide remark. Without looking, McConnell drops an Effenheimer and tells him to F off or F you or something, I don't know. Turns out the guy that made the snide comment was none other than the ref. <laughs> so McConnell told the ref to Fuck off. Pardon the language. <laughs> I got I got a bit of advice for you young hockey players. If you're going to uh, jaw jack and trash talk a little bit to players, that's all fine. No problem. Just mind your P's and Q's. Don't do it to the refs. Now, if you hear a snide comment or a remark, look over your shoulder before you fire back a retort. Make sure it's a player you're talking to, not the ref. <laughs> Just... <laughs> okay, um, truth be told, McConnell has played two games. Actually, he's been playing uh, probably four games since then. He has not received any further punishment from the league or the wrath of any other referees. He's minded his P's and Q's, but it still is a funny story that he gets an unsport a 10-minute unsportsmanlike 
for, but he got ejected. He actually got ejected out of this game for dropping an F-bomb at a ref. I mean, I thought seeing Vermette in the NHL for the Ducks give a stick tap to the rear end of the linesman because of a poor face-off. I thought that was kind of funny. He got a 10-game suspension. McConnell does it. He, he does he does the beer league version by telling the ref to F off and he gets ejected from a beer league game. I mean seriously, almost as bad as what's his nuts who, you know, got a uh, ten minute game misconduct for intent to injure or spearing. I mean, how are you still in the league when you spear somebody? To there's a rule that says if you have intend to injure you can be suspended X amount of games. Well, let's look at intent to injure. Where in hockey is spearing trying to get the puck off of an opponent? Hooking, you're trying to slow an opponent down. Slashing, you're trying to you know knock the stick out of a guy's hand so he can't control the puck. Body checking, it's not in the rules. You can't body check in this league. You can battle for position, but you can't flat out drill a guy to get him off the puck. But I, all these infractions are intended to get the puck to stop the puck carrier. Spearing is not intended to stop the puck carrier. Spearing, by definition, is intent to injure. Yet this guy, in my opinion, got off easy. I mean, seriously, spearing. When was the last time you saw that in the NHL? I saw Dino Cicerelli do it when there was only one ref on the ice, but that was back in the late 80s, early 90s. When was the last time you saw spearing? I mean, come on. Right, I'm sorry. It's just, I think that's kind of funny. We'll be right back with the final thoughts after this message. Don't go away. Spearing, I swear to God. Yeah. Ay, caramba. was a dipshit, and I'll say a dipshit, because he was a dipshit. Are you stupid? What kind of a parent are you, you dumbass? The guy scored a goal from the penalty box, for God's sakes. Be gone with him, he's a bitch, he's a dumbass. Get the fuck out of here, who the fuck cares, right? Come on the show, we'll duke it out! What? New show, yeah? Fuck you! That, that Don Cherry guy, he's a fan. He dresses in jeans. <laughs> been following the penalty box since our very first episode back in 2010 I want to thank you personally thank you it means a lot to me that we still have fans that go all the way back to our online video game coverage of both the virtual hockey league and leaguegaming.com the LGHL for you guys still playing in the L LGHL I wish you nothing but the best B McDonald Brody Tristan all you guys you guys are awesome Every single one of you guys playing from the NHL down to the CHL, you're all awesome. I had a great time covering you guys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, to Technologic Disrepair, those of you who know him know what I mean when I say, fuck you, you're an asshole. I don't like you, never did like you, I hope. Yeah, I just, I, I want to wish you the best, but my mom told me it's not nice to lie. So... Uh, for those of you in the AHA or covering or following the AHA through JMS and all the other websites, welcome to the program. We hope to have more episodes out in due time. We had some legal troubles with our days in LGHL. We were under contract, so that's why we've been delayed. Oh, quick shout out to the guys at Total Hockey. Total Hockey is a sponsor of the program. Ross and Luis, otherwise known as Lois. Please let Dr. Grant know that I. Missed you guys. You guys are awesome. I'll be stopping in sometime soon. Um, these two guys uh, joined me in a charity game over the uh, month of January for the St. Paul Winter Carnival in Minnesota. It was a lot of fun. Uh, these two guys are, uh, uh, well, 
to be honest, they're a joy to play on the same line with. It was a lot of fun. But Ross, man, I swear to God, auto detailing or whatever you do at that car dealership isn't your strong suit. You should become a plumber. I've never seen someone hit so much pipe in my life. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Uh, from everybody here at the Pally Box to you hockey fans sitting at home watching this show. We'll see you at Center Ice when the puck drops. Good night. Tonight's episode of the Pally Box is sponsored in part by Butthurt Cream. Instant relief for your belief. Butthurt Cream. It's a work in progress. New security system right here. This is Titan. She's a Rottweiler. Aren't you? More like a pain in my ass. Say hi.